We've got a special treat, especially for the English in the room, from Rugby AM. This is a poor man's, their, their words, they reckon a poor man's footy show. But the guys from Rugby AM, the great, the great Alex Simmons, and also the great Jamie Jones Buchanan, eight-time premiership winner, are here on stage in about, a, about 30 seconds or so. Before we do go to them, though, Look at the screen, have a look, little bit of a look at how their footing their show goes in England. They are killing it. Obviously, we're here for the World Cup final, Jamie Jones. Are yeah. you nervous? I'm a little bit nervous for the boys. I know they'll be uh, they'll be nervous within their hotel rooms, making the last bit of preparations. But what you do today is irrelevant because winning big games happens in January, February. It's an accumulation of the whole season, and we've got the best players to represent England going out today, and they're going to go do us a job. I believe in the dream. I believe in the narrative. And whilst the odds might be stacked against us on paper, I think we're going to go and do a massive job. It's great to be here amongst all the different fans from all the, uh, the clubs in and around England. I'm absolutely buzzing to see everybody in New England shirts, and I've had a few photographs as well, but a little bit of housekeeping for everybody, all right? There's a few confused people out there. My name <laughs> is not Ben Jones Bishop, all right? It's Jamie <laughs> Jones Buchanan, and if you've called me Ben, don't worry about it, it's about five or six times having on his trip, but it's JJB, the guy who's got no song because his name's too long. I'm really excited about being here and uh, looking forward to getting a win today. Mate, it's uh, Jim Jones, Jamie Jones, Jamie, Jamie Jones, he's got no song, his name's too long, enough of that. There's about four Leeds fans down there. I know, yeah. Where is all the England fans, England fans, make some noise! This is the best fan pack I've been to. We do the Challenge Cup, we do the Grand Final, but this right here, the World Cup Final. It's a very, very special day. We've got a couple of special guests coming on stage in a little while, but yeah. we've got to say a big thanks to Glory Days and everyone on the Glory Days tour, everyone who's been around. We've been over here for the last three weeks, traveling around, we've done Melbourne, We've done Auckland, we've done Sydney, and now this wonderful city of Brisbane. Jamie, what's been your favourite? What's the highlight of your time? Uh, it's got to be Melbourne. I don't know why. I think it most rely, reminds me of home, uh, the temperature. I'm a proper Yorkshireman. Uh, as everybody knows, born on 1st of August. So I like being cold. I'm not so keen on warm weather. I'm looking forward to getting back home if I'm honest here. But catching up with people like uh, Alan Altt, Marcus Bai, Jimmy Seguiaro, um, and a few Ooh. others. Andy A, and uh, today, Matt Adamson. Outstanding. He's just there. He's here, what is it? He's here, 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 Matt Adamson. Look at him, Matt Adamson. Religion. It's like Benjamin Bourne, he looks like he could put a kit on and play tomorrow. Outstanding. He's a glamour, he's a glamour. Yeah, he's for, them. They love for him. all you people out there, who's, how many people are on tour? How many people are on tour, put your hands up. Loving the tours, look at them up there, the legends. 
We've been a little, we've been doing some vlogs, we've been walking around with a camera, and we're going to do it as soon as we come off stage, we're going to come around and meet some of you lovely people, and we thought we'd show you a little bit about how our tour's gone so, so far, so please roll the VT. Yes. This guy, is wild. Here's A few yeah. familiar faces on there, a few uh, for the tall people down there. It is. If you don't know what Rugby M is, basically, we started in my garage uh, a few years ago in 2012. Uh, just a bit of a passion for Rugby League. Uh, I was a DJ at the time, and we were doing a radio show. Jones used to come around, stick gum all over the wall. Five years later, we're on TV across the country in the UK, on all local different channels, and we're looking to get onto Sky in the near future, hopefully, and broadcast around the world. It is. I don't know if you described it when we come up, but if you've seen Footy Show, it's like the Footy Show with no money. Without That's getting it. money. That's pretty, what it's like. Much. And uh, it's run by two guys who haven't got a clue about media or television. But we do our best. We yeah. do our best, don't we, mate, with a uh, voice recorder. Oh, we did do. Yeah. And uh, we own it, we've grown it, and uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. And if England win today, it could change the whole landscape, you know. I think it could. I think uh, the biggest compliment I've had, I think, so far, uh, a guy came up to me and went, you're like the black ant and deck. I'll, yes. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, Today is an important day for English Rugby League. If we win, which one am I? Am I the one with big forehead? Definitely yeah. five head. Big forehead. Which, which, which one's that? Without that, that's uh, deck. I'm deck. Peck. You're I'm peck. That's it. I like it. Right, we've got some special guests today, but Jonesy, I think we need to get a bit more into costume because the, the man we're coming up on stage, love it, is a proper legend, and there's only one shirt that'll do him justice. And Jonesy, you can put yours on first. It's the Great Britain shirt, the record cap maker for Great Britain with 46. Legend of the game, please put your hands together for the one, the only, the legend himself, Gary Schofield! 
Oh! Scores back in pre season. Cruxy, you're not being missed, son. You're not being missed. <laughs> <laughs> Scully, how are you feeling, mate? It's World Cup final day. Pretty nervous, to be honest with you. Pretty nervous, like everybody else. But, um, excited. Very much excited because the fact of the matter is, when we all set off from England, whether it was on the 25th of October or we arrived here two and a half weeks ago, we all wanted England in the final, and that's exactly what we got. We wanted England in the final to play Australia. We're here, around about what, just less than four hours away from kickoff. Yeah, I'm pretty nervous, but also too very excited because there's nothing better from the big occasions and a World Cup final. Simple as that. Um, I've been watching that, that channel, Fox. 360, I think it is, watching some of the old games. I think it's outstanding that I've got a 24-hour rugby league TV. And the, the way the shirts took the colours in a little bit like this, I've took mine in like they used to do back in old days. And one of the stars on there was Brett Kenny. And I know he's a really good friend of yours. You've, uh, you've caught up with him while you've been over here. And for me, the best part about the tour is that you catch up with lifelong friends as if you've never ever left them. And uh, for me, that's what rugby league is all about. Tell us a little bit about Brett Kenny. How is he and how good has it been to catch up with him? Well, First of all, what we've got to say about rugby league is we're a rugby league family, aren't we? I know it's all great to see all the different shirts from everybody, but the fact of the matter is we're all here supporting England. We've been here for the six weeks, four weeks, five weeks, whatever. We're all here supporting England today. It's as simple as that, whichever club. But <coughs> you mentioned the great Brett Kenny. Brett Kenny joined us in Sydney, uh, uh, sorry, in Melbourne for four days on the glory days from there. Uh, Brett himself, as we all know, got diagnosed with cancer around about 10 months ago. The treatment's gone well. Is that his last treatment of chemotherapy and uh, so then he's in remission and then hopefully keep fingers crossed everything's all right for the legend Brett Kenny but the fact of the matter is yeah we know what he did for Wigan but when he played against us uh, for Great Britain quite simply he ripped us apart him and Wally Lewis you know they ripped us apart and Brett Kenny will go down as one of the greatest players not just for Parramatta but also too for Australia quite simply one of the best that's ever played the game. Scully I've got to ask you mate we're here today it's the final We've been beaten 18-4 already by the Aussies in this competition. What do England need to do today to win the legend? We need the legend to speak and tell us the legend's call. Right. I've been saying now to, to many people over the last two or three days, and I think I know a little about rugby league. I know everybody agrees with my predictions in League Express, don't you? Yeah. You're all happy when I don't say, say that we're going to win, don't you? But anyway. Yeah. Right, the fact of the matter is, I'm just going to go back a few years. When we beat Australia in Melbourne 92, we scored five tries. When we beat Australia in Sydney in 2006, I think we scored at least four tries. So for us to win here tonight, we have to score at least four tries. We have to score at least four tries. Is that possible? Yeah. Well, is that possible then? Yeah. Come on! Well, one thing for sure, we have the forward pack. I don't have any issues with the forward pack whatsoever. Australia won't be easy in the forwards. But the simple answer is, is the creativity. <coughs> and when I talk about creativity, you talk about, it's a word in rugby league now, the spine of a side. So I'm just going to explain a little bit from a point of view. When you look at the spine of the side with England and Australia, we've got Gareth Winnib at fullback, who gets an 8 out of 10. Australia, you've got Billy Slater, who gets a 9 out of 10. Then this is a problem for us in the halfbacks. In Kevin Brown and Luke Gale. Well, that, that just, just stuck you there really quick. I don't, I don't want to cut you off halfway because you're going really well, but I wanted to ask you, and I reckon that the, the team is actually within hearing distance. So we've got Kev Brown and uh, we've got Luke Gale, uh, Cooper Cronk, some world-class halfbacks, uh, Michael Morgan in, uh, in Australia. Yeah. What yeah. do our halfbacks well, need to do to get over the top of them? This is what I'm going to explain to you, right? right. So Sorry. then, and I say we've got Kevin and Luke Gale at ours who international level have to prove themselves yet. I'm not convinced, they get a 7 out of 10. But then when you look at the Aussie halfbacks, Michael Morgan gets an 8 and Cooper Cronk gets a 9. And then from a hooker's point of view, James Robry, he gets a 9 out of 10. Yes. He gets a 9. Because quality, but also too, he's playing against the best hooker that's ever played the game in Cameron Smith. And he gets a 10. Cameron Smith gets a 10. So what we have to do, yes, it's obvious you've got to score more points with the opposition. But Luke Gale and Kevin Brown, they have to have more purpose on attack. They don't have to be indecisive. And what we've got to do, what we've got to do here is ask questions from 30, 40 metres from our own try line to make sure the Aussies aren't aware of what we're going to do. Play off the cuff rugby league, chips over the top, 40-20s, 
That's the only way we're going to score four to five tries. Are we good enough to do that? Here we I'm are. I'm not convinced. Here we are. Go on, we are. Go on, we are. England. I'm excited, Scully. It's always good to hear from the legend. We're going to come back to you for your prediction in the very near future. But first, let's get another guest up on stage. He has drunk Australia dry. He, this guy is the biggest machine I've ever met in my life. Absolute legend of rugby league. Leeds, Great Britain, Halifax. What else can we say about this man, Jones? You know him really well. Well, it's really funny because uh, I spend a lot of my days working away trying to get back to Bramley. This guy comes to Bramley, works his backside off and spends all his days working to get out of Bramley. He's got a little shoebox under his bed. And when he gets his cash from his labouring, he puts the cash in the shoebox. And when he can't shut the lid anymore, that's when he knows he can book an holiday and go away. Now, a budget is $100 a day. Now, if you'll probably know, if you want to get Brian Junk on the tour in Australia, it's going to cost you $300. So he's short of money at the minute. I think he's looking for a little bit of work as well, but he's looked after me from being a young kid, and I love him to bits. It is, of course, the big man who looks well in place in this shirt, Roy Dickinson. Make some noise for Roy Dickinson. <laughs> Here he is, the legend. Here he is. Big goes one for you there, mate. A proper forward. Come in middle. Come in middle, Roy. Come in the middle. Proper forward back in there. This yeah, guy. you're in hooking position now, kid. Well, thanks for letting everybody know when I keep my money. That's, uh, <laughs> that's made me really assured. This isn't going out live to England, is it? Yeah, bad news in Bromley as well. I think somebody will be breaking into my house now. But, uh, no, thanks, uh, thanks for inviting us up on stage. Right, so we've just listened to Scully talking about how England can score those tries and whose responsibility is. Now, uh, he always talks about the forwards doing the donkey work. And we know through history that don uh, the forwards can change these games. Now, it's a little bit more sanitised than it was uh, in your day. You used to, be able to put a bit of an elbow up there. If you weren't winning on the scoreboard, you could give them a, a bit of an idea. Scully's talking about players who are 10 out of 10. You could knock 10 bells out of them if you wanted to. You could win it like that, or you could have a little bit of rain, and the rain comes down, and the, the floods come up, and you get a result like that. What do our forwards need to do today to get over that Australian pack? Well, that's what we've got to do. We've got to knock seven bells out of them. Yes. Um, I think we've got to start off with a couple of brawls, maybe one or two later on, and uh, keep doing it, because if we let this Australian side play football, I mean, we all yep. know that they're the best side in the world, uh, by a long way, but uh, we've come here to do a job and uh, we've been doing it all along, you know, not being spectacular, but we've won every game that we've, we've entered and uh, we've got ourselves into the final. Now, there's only 80 minutes to go. Now, I wouldn't care less who I'm, who I'm playing against, what position they're in, and I'm sure these lads won't tonight. They've got, we've got white shirts on, they've got green shirts on, and uh, I think tonight we'll knock some bells out of them and we'll yes. win. I love it, I love it, Roy. One thing I do know about you, mate, you're a bit of a realist, but I need to know, what's your heart telling you and what's your head telling you? Well, my heart's telling me the same as my head because um, I've had more bangs on my head than I care to remember. But uh, I'm a very passionate Englishman, uh, even though I've got loads and loads of great Australian friends. I've got a couple here today with me that played with me at Leeds. Uh, Terry Webb and Wally Fulton-Smith, maybe get them up later. And uh, I just love Australia, but uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could beat them? Um, and I, I think we can, to be honest. We've got 16 start of the bookies. And uh, I'm having a good bet on it. And if we get beat with 16, then I deserve to lose my money. But uh, I don't think I will. That'll do for me. Just a game breakers there, Roy. Just pick me a couple of players who we need to watch today. Who's going to get that offload? Who's going to fall on the front and play the ball quick? Who's going to burst through the line and come up with something special and get it to our backs? Which forward is going to be the game breaker for England today? Well, it, it doesn't matter because everybody plays the same game now, don't they? Even the backs, I think, play like forwards. That, uh, like Gary just said earlier, we've got to change it. Whether we can change it, I don't know because I don't know if these lads can play another type of game. But we've certainly got to change it tonight and that's that's by putting the Aussies off their game. I'd be concentrating on that and um, I, honestly, I'm quite confident, you know. Wait, I'll, I'll tell you, we'll come back to you for your score prediction in a little while. Right, if you want to go to that side of the stage, just go and stay at this side. We have a little bit of fun now. Have we got any Australian fans anywhere? Right, I need a volunteer. Do you, does one of you want to come up on stage? Come on. One of you two, come on. I need come an Australian on. fan. And we need an England fan as well. Bubbles, come on, Bubbles. 
He's been the star of our tour. Oh, he looks so, angry. We know we've got one of these girls. Come on, come on, come on. So we've got one of the girls. Come round to the side of the stage. Brody will, will bring you on stage. A little bit of fun. As you can see from the Rugby Aim vlog, we've caught up with many a famous face on our travels so far. Uh, so what we thought, we thought come with a little bit of a quiz for a couple of fans. Come on, get yourself up bubbles and we'll see how well these two is Australia versus England. We're going for bragging rights. We hopefully will get the first victory of the day. And uh, Bubbles, you come to my side, so me, you and Scoey over this side. Who have you got over oh, there, yeah. Jonesy? Ladies first, ladies first. Come, come, on, come and jump up with Jonesy, come jump up with Jonesy. Here. What's your name? Jocelyn. Jocelyn, and where are you from? Are you from Brisbane? Yes. And uh, you, um, I assume you're going to be supporting Australia today. Is Brisbane your team as well? Yeah, of course, yes. And uh, how many points do you think you're going to win by? Oh, 50. Ooh. Ooh. Is there any more it's all, this? Oh, Everybody, it's wow. all right to boo her. After three, as loud as you can, big boo. One, two, three. <laughs> that, that's for you, Jocelyn. Pantomime. That's for you. Pantomime. From Pantomime. England with love. Right then. <laughs> the main man, this guy has been an absolute star on the tour. He's building life and soul of the party. I was in Tonga and I thought, you know what, it could get a bit rowdy here. The Tongans are not only the biggest people in the world, they're the best people. I'm walking through all these crazy Tongans doing dances and we see little bubbles on the shoulders of a guy twice the size of me. And he got on the coach and he, had, he went, I've got grass on my leg. He had all this stuff on. Have you enjoyed your tour so far, mate? Yeah, we're having a fantastic time and we're going to get the win today. Yeah. Well, it's a really simple game. We've caught up with some superstars of Rugby League and all you've got to do is a multiple choice and uh, you've got to tell us. We'll, uh, we'll go first with the ladies first, so you go first, Jonesy. It is. We can't see the screen, but we'll do our very best. Uh, we went for breakfast with a with Bo Wright to do and he said, Jermaine McGovery will need to score two tries, but what else will he need to do? Well, they need to high five Wayne Bennett. So after he scored two tries, yep. what will he do? What will he do? High five Wayne Bennett. Will he do a somersault or will he bite the referee? What do you reckon? Jermaine McGovery. What did Bo say he'd do? Oh, backflip. Do somersault. A backflip. She's going a somersault. Let's see what Bo said. Hopefully England are going to win. We'll be there this weekend. Thank McGilvray, you. McGovery, so two tries. You reckon? Yeah, they know he's going to bite the ref. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't bite the ref. I love him, man. He's a great player. He's ran the most metres, you know that? Yeah. 1,200. So he said bite the ref. So it's Australia nil, but will it be England one, right? So we call with Brett Kenny, and we all know that Brett Kenny had a successful stint uh, in the UK with Wigan. But which English club did he want to sign for? Was it Castleford, Warrington or Leeds? What do you reckon, Bubbles? It's got to be Leeds, hasn't it? There's got to be no one else. <laughs> Let's have a look what Brett said. And then I had the opportunity to go and play at Wigan, and I wasn't 100% sure. To be honest with you, I wasn't that keen to do it. But um, I was getting married at the end of 1984, and, and my wife-to-be then, was um, she was keen to come to England. And so I thought, OK, well, there was two guys, Eric, Eric Graves and Neil Hunt, who were playing for Leeds. And I was actually hoping that I could play for Leeds, so, because at least I know someone um, there. But I, with the, the way the rules were, they. I had to, couldn't play at Leeds, and I got an opportunity to play at Wigan. 1 0 to England! Come mm. on! Have some of that, Jocelyn. What's next? Unbelievable. If it had come to Leeds, I wonder if it had been a bigger legend than Scoey. No way. What, what do, do you reckon, reckon Scoey? What do you reckon, Scoey? Not a chance. Not, Not a chance. chance. Right then, we caught up with George Burgess, one of the, the Burgess boys, and we asked him who were the toughest players he'd ever played against and uh, it gave us a number one so which of these three guys is the toughest player that George Burgess has ever played against was it Jason Tomololo was it his brother Sam Burgess or was it big Sonny Bill Williams Jason Tomololo let's have a look what he said uh, who's the number one toughest player you've ever played against I'd say Sonny Bill Williams uh, when he was playing at the Roosters in 2013, 2014, he was, you know, one of the best players in the comp then, and um, he was really hard to tackle. Uh, so one, another player that's got really good footwork and acceleration. Yeah, uh, he can really accelerate into the, into the line, and he's hard hard play to stop. So, and he's got just you know, a bag full of skills and stuff. So, he's he's definitely up there. 
if you get if you get this right, we've got the first victory of the day, Bubbles. No pressure, no pressure, Bubbles. Right then, so it's interesting because we do. If you look on YouTube, we've got over a thousand videos since we started in 2012. And one thing that's been really popular is going to see legends like Roy Dickinson and asking him about the toughest players he came up against. And uh, somebody who's picked in quite a few of those teams is Ruben Wickey. And uh, we thought when we were in Auckland, we had to go and catch up with the legend. He's a fitness freak, top, top bloke, hard, legendary hard man. But which player did Ruben Wickey pick at standoff in his greatest ever uh, team is 1 to 13 players that he'd played with. Was it Ricky Stewart? Was it Laurie Daly? Or was it the King Wally Lewis? You can ask Scott if you get you, you can ask Scott is up. He's here on your side if you want. What, what do you reckon, Scott? <laughs> For the friend, it's got to be the King. You, you, you both saying the King? The King, no. You're saying the King Wally Lewis. What did he say? Number six is um, uh, Green Machine legend Laurie Daly. Uh, can't really, you know, the honours of that man, you know, playing New South Wales, Australia, uh, captain in New South Wales, uh, married a Kiwi, so I'll put him in there. So it's just a lot of respect for Laurie and what he does for the game and um, what he's um, helped me with through, throughout my career at Canberra. Oh, Scoey, you got one wrong, mate. Got one wrong. Well, the, the king, the king, no doubt, no doubt. What's your score prediction, Bubbles? 18-10 England. 18 10 England. Scoey, what do you recommend? Oh, uh, well, let me just try and explain for a minute to me. I just want to say hi to the guys down here. Boy, oh boy. Remember South Africa? The quote there. Listen, let's, um, let's take things into perspective here now. As I mentioned earlier, for us to win here tonight, we're going to have to score at least <coughs> four tries. Have we got that in this game to, to score that? Yeah. I'm pretty doubtful, if I'm honest. I'm, 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 I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, yeah, I know we're gonna, I'm pretty doubtful. Uh, can we win tonight? Over 80 minutes, I believe. If we are to win tonight, Australia have to play their worst, and we have to play our best to win the World Cup. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Rugby League's the winner. Rugby League on this show is gonna be the winner. But unfortunately, Australia win tonight, 32 points to 10. That's, that's treason. That treason. Is treason. Lock him up, throw away the key. Yeah. Jocelyn, what are you saying tonight? He's only being honest. 24-6. Um, 24-6, Roy, what are you saying? Roy, I think it'll be a very, very close game. Um, I think it'll be maybe 20 points to 18 to England. 22-18 20 to, uh, to England. Right, a massive thank you from myself, Alex Simmons, Jamie Jones Buchanan. Please check us out on social media, at RugbyM, Alex Simmons TV. Uh, Instagram and all that. It's been fantastic to be here, entertaining you for a short time. Big thanks to Roy Dickinson, give him a clap. Our contestants, give him a clap. The legend Gary Schofield, Jimmy Jones Buchanan. Right now, it's time for the first World Cup final of the day. Really important as well. The Jillaroos playing the Ferns. Uh, go the Ferns. Let's go behind New Zealand. Thank you very much. Have a great day. We're going to come out and do some filming. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Have a great day. Come on, England.